are Popcorn Kiss and Vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. I'm Scott. JB4. So this is our big Comic-Con wrap-up show. Um, unfortunately, oh, we can't get to absolutely everything. But, um, you know, think, we'll go we'll to the... Uh, we'll get to the meaty bits, the steak. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there is a lot, man. Maybe a little bit of starch here and there. But um, I kind of broke this up into different sections. Let's start it out with trailers. All right, uh, first trailer up was Jigsaw. Did you guys see that? That's going to be the um, kind of a, a homage to Saw, like a sequel but a spinoff kind of I thing. I saw the teaser for the trailer and was like, I'm more interested in seeing all the other trailers we're about to talk about. Yeah, I saw it. It's, it's, it's exactly what you think it is. It looks fun, but whatever. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I I thought it was cool. I mean, I've only seen a couple of those movies, but I mean, mm-hmm. it, it was neat. I mean, if I was a fan of that franchise, I mean, it was it was pretty cool. It had some okay. had some cool cringe I like moments the cool in it. Traps that they set up that was kind of nice to see. Yeah, I mean, like when I see people like chained up by the wrist and they're being dragged by saw blades, I'm like, oh fuck, right. no, thank you. Right. All right, the biggie, Ready Player One, which in my opinion was the winner. Of the convention. Uh, no, not for me. Not for me either. I don't know. I thought it was fucking awesome. I loved it. I mean, riddled with pop culture stuff. I mean, it, it, little, it was awesome. Little bits of everything. It was the shit. I mean, it had Freddy Krueger in it. It had fucking Kaneda's motorcycle from Akira. It had Christine. It had That's the awesome, A-Team. What was, it, what was it about? It just it's, looked like a big, giant pop culture vomit on the screen (laughs) well i mean what it is is that it's very similar to willy wonka um it's a guy who invents this world that's known as oasis and it's only limited by your imagination and what he's done is is that he's put scott's favorite thing in the world easter eggs not spoilers in oasis right that um if you uncover these eggs it will actually give you greater insight i think even ownership over oasis if you find it's like one egg right you find one egg you get to you get to own the whole thing so yeah i guess you're you're right yeah it's kind of like the golden ticket and i mean even in the respect that i mean the the orchestrated music at the beginning of the trailer is the um is the imagination song that's sung by wonka gene wilder's willy wonka you know the wonka that counts yeah um, you know, they have that, that music is kind of a homage to that. And it's followed up with Tom Sawyer by Rush, um, which I fucking hate Rush, but I at least think it's awesome that since the guy in the book who creates Oasis is a huge fan of Rush, which mm-hmm. makes me realize that he's kind of a fucking douche, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, it is evident that if you create a world like Oasis, you never get laid. So, I mean, it's. Rush, I, Rush I, makes sense. I thought it was a well edited trailer to that song, anyway. And uh, what I thought was really interesting is that it's a tribute to '80s culture. This is based on a hugely popular book, by the way. Um, I understand that. And there weren't any Steven Spielberg directed films in the the so that's... massive deluge of Easter eggs. So it was him sort of paying his own homage to all this other stuff that he's I think over he the years. said he didn't want to put any of his film I mean the closest he gets is back to the future because he did produce that right. but, uh, well we're getting a little clips like I said I think out of a two minute trailer you only get about 30 seconds of what's in there I mean there's going to be a shitload of stuff in there yeah I don't think he, but I mean if that's what he said in an interview that's fascinating to me so no Indiana Jones no, or E.T. or Jaws none of or none of that I mean that's pretty on purpose yeah I think, and I, I guess it would be weird and sort of like braggadocious to include your own shit in there, but it belongs, you know. I loved it. I thought the trailer looked great. Yeah. I, I love the stack city of, of the of all the like yeah. trailer park and all that stuff, and it's Ohio, and it's called the stacks, and it's like basically like trailers hooked on top of one another, right out of the book, man. And I mean, it's it was Nailed fucking it. cool. Very very nice. I liked it. It was refreshing to see something new. Yeah. All right, Kingsman <laughs> two. Kingsman yeah, 2. I yeah. It was great. Not the winner yet. We're not there yet, but I loved it. Yeah. Oh, the Kingsman 2 trailer was great. I, did, I, you, did you watch the Red Band trailer? Uh, I didn't see the Red Band one. I just it's, saw the regular it's one. Basically the same, except at the end, uh, instead, when he goes, uh, that was very American of you. He says, fuck yeah. Oh, okay. Of, yeah. yeah gotcha. Okay. I did see that one. So that's it. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, it, it looked, it looked, looked amazingly yeah. cheesy and cartoony as shit. And that's what it's meant to be. And, I'm sure that it's a Matt Vaughn movie, so I mean... And violent. The movie, yes. the, the violence and combat scenes, you know, the fight scenes are going to be incredible. Oh, yeah. So I'm all in on that. 
All right, Stargate Origins. Um, I don't. I didn't, I didn't even know, know that that, that was, was a, a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I either. love. I, I love the the movie, the one with Kurt me Russell. Too. And I saw the um. I saw the, like the first season of the show, which was extremely well done. I saw one episode, uh, and I was like, "Wow, this looks really great." I never revisited it but it's the one where the black hole opens at the other side of the yeah. stargate and they can't close it it's slowing everything down i saw it was that a as great well. episode yeah yeah the um oddly enough that show you know paid a lot of homage to the movie and it kind of like reinvented the film franchise and it got a huge following like you know yeah. I, I mean and it's one of these followings like Battlestar Galactica, oh, you know, I mean, if you drop it, it back brought sci-fi back on the map as far as that channel goes very much so very much so. Next trailer, Walking Dead, Season 8. I saw it. Yeah. This is a trailer. Exactly what it was supposed to be. I, I heard a lot of people... If you hadn't seen the trailer, I'm about to spoil the whole thing for, me, for you. But if you hadn't seen the trailer, there's a scene at the very end. They do like an end credit trailer scene where there's Rick, old man Rick, waking up from either hallucination or whatever. they. But, you know, there's a scene of old man Rick laying in a bed, waking up. And some people have theorized that that's him waking up from his coma. I figure they're just trolling us, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, I've, I like you know. Look, Walking fine. Dead. I'm invested, right? But it's like the thing. I'm folding laundry and playing Angry Birds while I watch fucking gotcha. Walking yeah. Dead. That's I pretty just, much what I, it yeah. is. I don't think they can put together any catnip that's going to make me go, "Oh shit!" You know, like uh, at this point. I only included this next trailer because I thought it looked great, but even though it looked great, I don't give a fuck. Krypton. Saw it. It looked great. Yeah, it looked great, but I just don't give a shit. I, I've on. actually read someone saw the pilot and said that it's like the most worthless, pointless show they've ever seen. Oh, and it, it looked beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. they said. I, I, I guess I'd, I'm going to go back, and I know Gotham is supposedly getting to be a really good show, but I don't want to see a movie. I mean, I don't want to see a TV yeah. show about Superman that doesn't have Superman in it. I'm sorry. Right. The, um, Batman, Batman. I, I kind of did a little digging into it, and they said that, that the uh, uh, Krypton show is actually going to deal a lot with time traveling, and they're going to use that as a device to integrate all these different DC superheroes. And I'm like, well, if you're going to go in that direction, why wouldn't you just do a show like, legion of superheroes and make it like fucking guardians of the galaxy for tv yeah i mean the legion of superheroes is like the year 3000 justice league i mean or just do green lantern core tv or show, just do booster know? gold i mean if you want to do a time travel thing right. and kind of like have it go through that i mean krypton sells whatever just yeah. whatever you do don't make it like legends of tomorrow Gerg. all right um it the, you saw uh, the trailer the new it trailer i looked for that trailer i couldn't find it uh, maybe I saw the old one, but this one was kind of more focused on the kids. And, Did, um, is there a, a scene where the kid is getting, one of the kids is getting beat up, and he looks over to the side, and there is uh, Pennywise Penny, with yeah. uh, a dead with a uh, severed baby arm? Oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. No, no, you saw that? that yeah, I saw that trailer. Okay, I didn't see that. that yeah. That's oh, the one God. they described on Thursday or Friday, and I looked for it and couldn't find it. Yeah, it's um, it it. it I'm I'm really happy with the direction. The guy he's going out balls out, and he said, "Look, the book is broken into two halves, to where it tells you about when they're kids and when they're adults. So I'm going to focus on the kids first. If it does well, we're going to do the sequel about the adults. It's going to be two different, entirely, you know, different movies. It's just going to be dialogue that's going to connect them together. I think if uh, that's cool. What he said, if this movie does well, he's going to start filming in 2018 or start the process in tw the, in January 2018. That's great, man. I, I heard that this award-winning author, and I can't remember his name, but he wrote a story called Heart Shaped Box that won a bunch of awards, that uh, he said that it's going to be a horror masterpiece. He's apparently seen an early cut and is like, it's up there. I'm in. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I always loved that book. I, I thought it was awesome. It's really a shame that Stephen King's film properties are tied up with other studios because there's a lot of shit in it that connects to other stuff. Oh, okay. You know, so yeah. In fact, um, one of the uh, big things in it is Shawshank Prison. That's like a big, a big mention thing in the story. Oh wow. So okay. yeah, really cool shit. Um, next is The Stranger Things Season 2. Ding, 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 It ding. looked fucking awesome, it dude. Did. That, to me, is the first winner. That, to me, blew my mind when I saw that trailer. I'm like, this is how you make a trailer. 
This is how you make a trailer for a Halloween show. Yeah. God damn, with with the Michael Jackson thing it in the background. It was so good, man. It was man. good, yeah. It was so Shit. good. And now it looks like we're going from the other beast. Now we're going to like Cthulhu gigantoid fuck fucking demon things. And that shit looked awesome, dude. It, yeah, I'm it, looking it forward to it. It looked really just colorful and dark at the same time. I'm in. Yep. 100%. The trailer looked great, but we're going to see if lightning can strike twice. Because right. the first season was so good. It was. I'm just curious to see if they're going to be able to replicate their right. success. So... And, uh, yeah, speaking of replicating success, uh, Westworld Season 2 trailer. I was, a, um, I was really unimpressed. It, it kind of, I mean, I was excited to see it, but it reminded me of, like, Jurassic Park. Like, the end, not the end, but, like, uh-oh, the dinosaurs have gotten out. Look out type of thing. I don't I know. I mean, it it was a teaser. I mean, yeah, I Very mean, vague. <laughs> it, it looked like just almost still shots practically from whatever the first episode's going to be. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I mean, I think that they should film that trailer twice. <clears throat> One time for you to watch it. And then when you watch it the second time, when the music sheets are going up the piano, the scroll is going up the piano, yeah. it should say more of the same because huh. it's going up. Because, I mean, that's pretty much the impression I got. I mean... Uh, well, I mean... All the personnel in the park are dead. So, yeah. I mean, it really, like, I'm just sort of like, where are they going to go with this? I'm, and I'm, I, I think it's, I, I think I, that was one of the best seasons of television. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, so I agree. I, whatever the trailer is, I'll give them, I'll give them a pass on a shitty trailer. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm all in. I'm going to watch the second season. I'm excited to see it, but the trailer didn't, like, you know, tweak my nips or nah, anything. Nah. You know what I mean? It's pretty much what it is. All right, Star Trek Discovery trailer. And the more that I see these trailers, the less interest that I am in this show. I didn't see it. I'm not interested. Yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of watch it, and I'm like, dude, it's it's Star Trek. I mean, cut off the Trek, throw wars on it, and I'm in. But <laughs> other than that, I, I really don't give a fuck, you know? I'm going to give it a shot when it comes out. We'll see. And um, this was another big winner for me, man, is The Shape of Water, which is uh, Guillermo del Toro's new movie that's coming out. Um, combine uh, Edward Scissorhands with the Creature of the Black Lagoon yeah. mixed in with some yeah. Splash. And, and Amelie. And, and and Amelie, which I'm unfamiliar with, but I'll, I'll take John's. John's very good with uh, with those associations. So, but yeah. It, yeah, it, it looked great. It did. Looked great. Very fairy tale. I love the music in it. Yep. It's it, kind of Tim Burton-esque, but, but not really. It's Del Toro-esque. Del it's Del Toro-esque. I mean, they're kind of similar guys in that kind of like kitschy kind of style, yeah. but they're, but they're unique in their own way. And, um, I loved it. I, I can't wait to see it. Um, actually that trailer I saw before comic Con yeah. played in a the theater. So, oh, okay. Really cool. All right. Um, this section here I call nuggets. This is just shit. That's kind of thrown all over the place before we get to the, uh, to the two biggies. Um, IDW has Ivan Reitman on their ghostbusters panel. Um, he admitted that the film flopped and it was weird to have the original actors just performing cameos. He said the comics have done a great job of melding both teams together and he's interested in doing that in the form of a movie. Um, reason I threw this in here, I really don't care about Ghostbusters. It can go away. But IDW's so, comics have been very well yeah. received and fucking Laddie, dude, did all the covers for them. And, um, Tim Laddie of Laddie Inc., yeah, you go definitely go check out Tim Laddie. Um, Tim has his own uh, produced comic book, Night Stars. Um, you should go check that out at Laddie Inc. on Facebook. And um, what I love about Tim's covers, I got a chance to actually run into him when he was drawing one, and he said that he used his um, he used these covers to basically Easter egg '80s pop culture all over. Them. Oh, awesome! So there's all kinds of little references that he's hidden all all throughout those covers. He Ready Player One did. Yes, he did. All right. While promoting Kingsman 2, Channing Tatum was asked about Gambit, to which he said setbacks and delays have been a blessing in disguise. With the introduction, well, <clears throat> excuse me, with the introduction of movies like Logan and Deadpool, it's given the team inspiration to move forward with things they wanted to do in the first place. Um, I'm still, this movie is not getting made. I, I'm, I've, it sounds like he's resolute. I think it is going to get made. I'm a Chris. I think he's All resolute. Right. I just don't think the studio's resolute. I think that they have bigger fish to fry right now. Mm. They got a lot of investment thrown into the continuation of the regular X-Men franchise. 
and they got a lot of investment thrown into death in, into Deadpool. And I'm sure that the gears are still turning as to what they're going to do to hold on to this Fantastic Four franchise. Yeah, I, I I'll put it to you this way: it, if if this uh, Soderbergh movie that's coming out, this like bank heist movie with NASCAR redneck dudes, I can't remember the name of it. Oh I yeah, yeah, that's the one with uh, Daniel Craig in it, huh? Yep. Uh, yep. right. That looks if, fantastic. It does. If if that movie is a success, Logan, Lucky Logan, right? Yes, that's Lucky it. Logan. If uh, if that movie is a success, I'm guessing that Fox will go full on. I mean, it, Tatum's box office mojo is it still a thing? Because it's been a while, you know, since yeah. the 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 Jump Street movies, lot, and the Magic Mike movies. So, I mean, that wasn't that long. I don't want to turn this into my thing, but that wasn't that long ago. A couple years ago, he's, he's yeah. What but it is. I mean, in in present day cinema, that's like you know computer years like that's a lot of time yeah i mean right, uh, right i agree with you especially if he does something that really carries what it's a film he's carrying that does very well yeah i, I think yeah i think you, he's got a good shot at making things uh making things go for him um this is crazy to me the production company responsible for paranormal activity get out and the belco experiment um experiment has met Todd McFarlane's demands and will fund his Spawn movie with McFarlane as director, writer, and producer. McFarlane says that he wants to make a horror movie with a character, um, with the character, and keep the budget at $10 million. I was listening to uh, Babylon with Kevin Smith and mm-hmm. Ralph Garman, and um, Kevin Smith said that he's producing a television show in England based on Sam and Twitch which are the two detectives from the Spawn comic, and it's like an X-Files kind of thing. Oh. And he's doing a, this thing for British TV, for BBC television, and he's been meeting with McFarlane to go through all the notes and all that stuff so he can get insight into the characters. And when McFarlane talked to him about the Spawn thing, Kevin Smith said, dude, you should go talk to Blumhouse. Go talk to those guys. I mean, they're funding all kinds of little specialty, low-budget projects, and they'd probably be more than happy to give you a shot to your demands. Sure enough, here it is. So they announced that at Comic-Con. Wow. Good for him. Very interested yeah. in seeing what a $10 million Spawn movie looks like. I'll definitely go see it. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. I'll, I'll wait to hear. I mean, because if it if it's a clunker, the, the fanboys will not be silent about it. Oh, no. You know? Rated R. It'll be good. Yep. Yeah, I mean... There it is. There are your standards. BB's Bar, a pop-up bar themed after Blade Runner 2049. It was sponsored by Johnny Walker Black, and this thing was the shit. It was. Yeah. I've, I've actually what? worked a, a couple of alcohol-based events, you know, like promotional events. That was outstanding. Go back to Blade Runner, the original movie with Harrison Ford when he's walking un- in the Undercity and buying the the sushi and the drinks. They recreated that as a pop-up. Oh, that's one. Okay, that's cool. It looked amazing. And they act- they had costumed people in there that were like, like dressed like replicants and rain in the and- perimeter. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, I mean that, that. that that's when you see companies do shit like that, man. I mean, that's just that's unbelievable, and I mean, I, I think that movie's going to do pretty well, and it's cool yeah. to it's cool to see, you know, the shit like that, man. You see it at a, at a media convention like that, man. That shit sticks in people's minds, you know, and they'll be able yeah. to go see Blade Runner twenty forty nine and say, man, I, I I walked in that bar and and it looked just like it looked just like this set, you know. So cool stuff. Um, last nugget here, uh, Star Trek Discovery lead. Uh, Michael Burnham, who is played by Sonequa Martin-Green. You'll know her from The Walking Dead. She played Sasha. It's been revealed that she is Spock's half-sister. Producers have asked fans to allow them to tell their story, but skeptics point to Spock's never-before-mentioned brother, Cybok, who was featured in Star Trek V, which was panned by both critics and fans. Um, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't like shit like that. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to put energy into commenting. I just don't care. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much it. I mean, for for the uh, Trekkies that listen to this show, you know. Sorry. We reiterate, we don't care. Threw that in there for you. All right, moving over to Fox. <laughs> Noah Hawley, who is, um, who is the creator of Fargo and also Legion. 
Yeah. Um, he's doing a movie who's going to be based on Doctor Doom. Um, they don't. They don't get it. They don't. They don't understand. You know. I mean, how do you make a Fantastic Four? How do you make a Doctor Doom movie without Fantastic Four? I just wish Fox would quit fucking around and would cut some kind of deal with Marvel uh, for them to give the rights back to the Fantastic Four. I. I, I feel like. I feel like that's already happened and this is a this is one of those things where it's it's where we're seeing it but we're not seeing it from all angles so when this movie comes out uh, i have a feeling it'll be tied in with marvel somehow i don't know i I think i i think this is partly suicide squad's fault because i generally the idea of coming up with an anti-hero movie based on a supervillain it's on paper something i'm interested in you know i mean i would i would get you know back in the day when i collected comics a doctor doom only comic mini series i'd be like oh yeah cool but i i think creating a movie around villains without their counterpart just seems like a bad idea even and and i and i love those shows i love fargo and legion both but i just think it's a bad idea i'm not i'm not getting the vibe that this I, is it, not the way to go. It's really sad that the Fantastic Four, you know, property is pretty much languishing at Fox because there is so much great info in that. There's so much, so many great storylines that are tied into the rights of that property. It's really sad that Marvel can't get it back. The X Men thing, okay, you know that that's fine. If Fox wants the X Men, that's okay, but. God damn it, man. Uh, if you could build the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom properly and mm-hmm. integrate that as like a one or two entire phase of a Marvel movie, you could do awesome shit, man. I mean, dude, he's tied in directly with Black Panther. He's a direct villain of that guy. So, I mean, Latveria is is like at odds with Wakanda over their vibranium. I mean, there's that. There's that okay. connection all kinds of ties in with the cosmic universe that could connect that to Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, just tons of shit. I mean, Doctor Doom is is the is the original Lex Luthor of, of Marvel yeah. Comics. I mean, he was a universal villain. He fucked with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I ever saw him as a kid was in Spider Man. Yeah. So I always thought he was a Spider Man villain. Yeah, I mean he's he's you know started out in Fantastic Four, but he's a cross title villain, and it's really a shame that uh that uh Marvel Studios can't get a hold of that. Hmm. All right, um, Fox also reveals that its new X Men spinoff is a universe onto its own. They explain that the events of Days of Future Past have created several timelines in the franchise, and this show inhabits its own. So this is kind of their what what Flash calls a multiverse. I mean, w- w- which just seems like them going, we just want to do our own fucking thing. If you need some context, it's in a multiverse, okay? But don't don't be looking at the other movies and, and doing the Simpsons nerd guy call-outs because you're wasting your time, uh, and, which is fair. No, And I agree with them. I mean, dude, it, trust me, if this wasn't a logistic pain in the ass, Marvel would already be connecting these Netflix shows to these movies. It's right. a it's a logistics nightmare. It's it a pain is. in the ass. You know, you got guys who are writing, you know, seasons of television, and I'm sure the television process probably takes longer than a movie. I mean, is that yeah? What, yeah. So I mean, these guys are kind of like you know, kind of working off a of rough stuff, you know, to to include mm-hmm. into their show. Yeah. You know, and I like the bus balls and all that stuff because anytime I can take swipes at Marvel, I I, I feel great, but. You know, but uh, I mean, with the thing with Netflix, though, I mean, dude, it, it's you can't it, you can't take swipes. I mean, it, they're creating two quality products that unfortunately can't tie together due to logistic reasons. Yep. So there it is. All right, moving on to Marvel. Yeah, you're right. All right, so um, Marvel says, um, well, we're not going to do anything at the convention and all that shit um, after D23, and then they end up in Hall H with a cornucopia of shit. Before yeah. you give us all the great things that they did that they weren't going to come to, I want to just say how convenient it was for the Avengers trailer to, to leak online the weekend of Comic-Con. Yeah. I'm just Oh, just yeah. Uh, look, what's interesting is... It's been getting yanked within hours. 
Yeah. Like, it's popped up. It's like whack-a-mole. It's shown up at three or four different times. And uh, I agree it's with the same you, Scott. shot. So, I, I, yeah, I, I th- I, I'm I, with you. I, I think this is a planned thing. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's genius. Which, by the way, it was great. But anyway, continue. It was. Yeah, even though the trailer was through the lens of a shitty cell phone, yeah. you could tell what was going on, and it looked fucking great. And you can Look. tell that there were a lot of people who pissed their pants or shit their pants. Yeah. Good God, they would... Did, I mean, dude, did they call... Did, did Rocket Raccoon call Thor a rapist? Because, like, when he hits the window, he's like, Rapist! Rapist! Get it off! You know, I, 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 that's what it sounded like to me. I listened to it a... Well, for the few times I could watch it, because it got bombed pretty I quick. Oh, they, they kept yanking it. I, I, I don't. I doubt they would say that in a Disney movie. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was amped about the Spider Sense. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, I was yeah. About the whole thing, it was great. But yeah, yeah, I mean, the the whole trailer was fantastic. I mean, it's really a shame that they wouldn't. I mean, I'm. I have a feeling that's going to be the trailer that's going to hit theaters at some point. You know, probably for Thor when that movie comes out. I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that's fucking wild, though. Yeah, or, yeah, looks so wild. All right, so I'm um, going on the uh, second Inhumans and Defenders trailers where um, those debuted. Um, Netflix also debuted a Marvel trailer that featured um, Netflix debuted a Marvel trailer that featured Stan Lee and the Punisher at the end. Yes. Um, I, the Defenders trailer was was awesome. I mean, it looked really good. Yeah. I, I read I read that the Inhumans trailer generated derisive laughter. What yeah. does that mean? That means people were laughing at it. And not yeah, everybody in Hall H were like, way. you know, fuck this show. Yeah, like, oh, oh. Well, all right. I mean, oh. that's what makes it so difficult, though, now, man, is that, like, you got your movie thing kind of, like, cooking along. You got quality shows on Netflix, man, and then you're going to up with this fucking piece of shit that you can throw on network television, you know? Plus, it's yeah. just goofy. Just fucking goofy looking. Uh, footage of the Punisher was shown, um, but that's unreleased also. Um, it showed mm-hmm. Frank Castle assassinating a man in a bordello in Mexico and another in El Paso. These were apparently people that killed his family. Um, at the end of the trailer, he beats another man, um, beats this other man to death, telling him that um, even though he's killed all of his uh, family's murderers, he'll never be at peace. And before he lands the killing blow, he reveals the iconic shirt with the skull on it. Yeah, I heard that brought the house down. Yeah, they said that was uh, really, really big shit. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I always like the Punisher. I think they cast the right guy. Hell yeah, they did. So, I mean, he's perfect. I mean, because, like I said, uh, John Bernthal is crazy in real life. Well, he's a great actor, and, and what... I'm really impressed by it, is that he's won me over in spite of the fact I fucking hated him in Walking Dead. I yeah, hated that character, that's point. and that's the first time. Well, it, it was. That's the first time I had seen him, and like I had a hard time forgiving him for it. But then I saw him in Wolf and Wall Street, and I'm like, wait, is that Shane from fucking Walking Dead? Yeah. He's a great actor. And he pops up in a bunch of shit. He was he great does. in The Accountant with fucking Ben Affleck. He, he was. was awesome in that, man. Yeah. So they definitely got the right guy. And like I said, he's nuts in real life. Yeah. So it, it worked out really good. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer has been officially cast to play the wife of Hank Pym and mother of Hope Van Dyne in um, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, Janet Van Dyne, who she's playing, she appeared in flashbacks in the first movie, but they never showed her outside of her costume. She went missing in the quantum realm when she was put when she pushed the limitations of her suit to save her husband. Um, Evangeline Lilly, who plays Hope in the love interest of Scott Lang, who's played by Paul Rudd in the movie, um, she actually tipped off the producers. You should cast Michelle Pfeiffer, and they took her advice and did it. So well, I think it's a good move. Yeah, yeah, it's a great move. I mean, before you know it, um, all of Burton's Batman characters are going to be Marvel characters. So. Uh, <laughs> Thor Ragnarok trailer two debuts. Ding ding ding! That's my winner. Ugh. I, yeah. I I didn't like it. What it really? Was great. No, I didn't. I didn't like it. Um, Holy shit! It's. I'll be honest with you, man. Um, I'm getting the fatigue on Marvel. I really am. What? I like their oh, stuff, wow. but I'm really starting to get the fatigue. After Spider Man, um, I mean, I liked it and all, but I'm. It's it's really getting to be the same old shit. I mean, it's it's really getting to that point. Why do um, you sound like me about Civil War? Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. Much. This this basically, I was like, oh, okay, it's Guardians of the Galaxy point, Part 3, but it's just starring different people. Mm-hmm. 
You know, I don't so. know. It looked like that. There were things in that trailer that were amazing to see. Yeah, that whole war on what looks like horses in uh in the sky, and oh my yeah. god, that's just amazing looking. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Like it, Hulk it, talking. It, it seems like it's fucking hilarious. It does seem like you it's know? hilarious, which like, I think is a yeah. very good turn for that. Yeah, those that story because the other two Thor movies were. So right. in other words, yeah. they made it like all the other ones. Everything's hilarious, and you know. It's no, you like mean the other know, ones, it, the other the other Thor movies, the other Thors weren't hilarious. Yeah, they no, were they like, weren't. Nah. But all the other Marvel movies are hilarious. So it's they're the formula. Make them. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. No, look, I'm not. Look, they know what they're doing. They mm-hmm. make movies. They make billions of dollars. Yeah, billions of dollars. You know, who am I, the guy, to sit there and say, "Look, dude, if your characters are going to laugh in the face of danger." And I can't take your danger like seriously You're anymore. Talking about the God of Thunder and the Hulk. Of course, they're gonna laugh at danger. Exactly. <laughs> that's every character, though, Scott. Uh, I mean, that's yeah. every fucking character. Oh, I'll get you that. I'll give you that. But so I don't know that I can give you. On like that. I said, man, look, I'm invested. I'll go see the Marvel movies. No, I t- mean, it sounds to me like you're not invested. They're, no, they're f- well, no, I'm invested, dude. I've I've watched 16 fucking movies, dude. Are you gonna do laundry? Yeah. And while I'm you watch into that one? the storyline. Yeah. No, I'm gonna go to the theater. I'm a while. I mean, if uh-huh. if they'll install a washer for me at the AMC, <laughs> yeah, fucking a, I'll do some laundry. You know, kill two oh, birds with one stone. But I, no, hey man, I, I'm I'm just fucking getting I, wore out with it. I man. was you. I was you yeah. at Civil War. I'll give you that. Just so, go, just go Walter White, man. Yeah, just you've take seen it word before. For it. <laughs> yeah, you've seen it before. It's no, Marvel. They're awesome. No, no, no. I've never seen it before. I just take everybody's word for it that it's oh, awesome, right. and then I don't have to watch it. All right, all right. But anyway, so the Black Panther trailer, I actually looked to see what some breakdown was on this stuff. And everything I found, it was like explanations of the first trailer yeah. and just like little subtle differences. They showed something. They said it was very well received. I, I h- looked high and low so I could report like actually yeah, what was in anything. it. But I, I couldn't find anything, unfortunately. Um, But I do like that guy, Chadwick Boseman. He's a fucking great actor. I like yeah. him. Uh, that that uh, Jackie Robinson movie he's in is awesome. I haven't seen a James Brown one, but that movie's awesome. The uh, Forty Two, yeah. so and he was great as Black Panther in the movie you guys were bored by, right? Exactly. Um, Captain Marvel was revealed to take place in um, the nineteen nineties. It's going to feature the Kree and Skrull Wars from the comics. The Skrull were thought to be tied up at Fox with the Fantastic Four rights, but James Gunn clarified that the rights are shared between both studios. The rumor of Samuel L. Jackson returning as Nick Fury are now official, and due to it happening in the past, he'll have both of his eyes. So huh. if the scrolls can change form, and this goes back to the 90s, do you think we're going to get some kind of reveal when we get to, say, the fourth Avengers movie? Uh, could be, man. Very well could be. And that's been a pretty popular device in the in the comics. Um, so, I mean, that that could be, that's what they're lining you up for. Um, the scrolls, from what I understand, is is that the Chitari from the Avengers one, um, scroll is actually kind of like a synonym for their race. They're known as several things, and scroll is one. So you might see the Chitari return to fight against the Kree, and the Kree have already been um introduced in Guardians of the Galaxy right. one. Ronan the Accuser was a Kree, and also um Ron uh, um uh, uh Yondu um Quills. Right, Quill's uh, uh, surrogate stepdad, you know, was was also a uh, a Kree as well. For, for a a fair weather comic nerd, I think that Marvel needs to really clarify the differences between these alien races because right now, from a movie perspective, they don't flesh out their villains enough for me to know the difference. Yeah, right. And out like you know, Kree, Skrull, Chitari. You, if you line them up, I'd be like, I I don't know. That one looks like it was throwing down and, Avengers, and maybe it doesn't matter when we get there maybe it won't matter well, well it sounds like it does in the marvel guy. universe but i think it's going to be i think it's also going to be visual representation as well you're going to see all these things in there and then you'll be able to sit there and be like oh yeah i remember that that was from that you know right. and, they'll, and they'll show you that thing and that that's another thing too man and, and look i'm not i'm not bashing all marvel i'm just saying man it's so much information now it's fucking yeah. huge yeah you're talking about jesus dude 32 hours of just movies mm-hmm. you know i mean that doesn't include television shows and i mean that's if you decide to follow agents of shield you know and stuff mm-hmm. like that i mean now you're popping an extra 100 hours 
You know, I mean, dude, if you think about it, it's crazy, man. Like they have, they now have shit. It's got to be close to 200 hours of, of programming just out of the MCU. You, you won't be able to do a single day marathon anymore for Marvel movies. You're right. Not that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what they'll have to do is when they do single day marathons, they're going to have to break it down to what's relevant to well, Avengers th- one, they'll two, have to three, break it or... down to what it is, you know, like, yeah. well, we're going to do a, th- we're going to actually go and we're going to come out with a fourth, you know, Thor Captain America movie. All right. Well, we're just going to marathon those movies. All right. You know, we're not going to throw in the Avengers or any of that stuff. So, hmm. All right, so moving on to DC. Uh, first thing that comes out of the gate, um, Shazam has been made official. It'll be directed by Lights Out and Annabelle director David F. Sandberg. Sandberg revealed that The Rock will not appear as Black Adam, so DC already f- shooting themselves in the foot. I think we'll get a Gambit movie before we get a, a Shazam movie. I think we'll get a Shazam movie before we get a Gambit movie because they said, um, I, I read a thing today on Movie Web. They said that it's been fast-tracked. So they listen to our show. Well, I think I think it's going to be. I think Shazam's going to certainly be a, a a movie before Gambit. I don't think Gambit will ever get made. I think this will get made. But okay, there there's a second part to that. But go on. What's the second part? Uh, well, Black Adam, because the the slate of movies that yeah aren't happening. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, drama began to swirl before DC's panel, suggesting that Ben Affleck's future as playing Batman was in doubt. Affleck cleared up the rumors, calling himself lucky to have the part. He also said he is solidly behind the Batman director, Matt Reeves, and will play Batman as long as Warner has him. He said he'd play an ape in a a Planet of the Apes. He respected the director so much. I think he handled it perfectly. Yeah, I think he pretty much put it down. And I, I mean, dude, I agree with him. I mean, if DC is in fact, you know, course correcting their their product, why would he not want to be on board for that? Yeah. I mean... Especially since everyone was saying he was the best part of Batman versus Superman, you know? Yeah, yeah like, until until Wonder Woman knocked the fucking right. crown off. Of yeah, so right. It's like, oh shit, Wonder Woman's in this film too. Yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, everyone's takeaway seemed to be that Affleck... I thought he was a good Batman. I hope he doesn't yeah. leave, but I think that was just a nice way of making people still want to buy tickets to the movies. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Though it wasn't officially announced, there are rumors that Jared Leto and Margot Robbie will have their own movie titled Harley vs. Joker or Harley v. Joker. Jared Leto, who has been cryptic about returning to the role, addressed his involvement at Comic-Con. He was quoted as saying, talking about the Joker is like talking about Fight Club. Unless you want to gargle your testicles, it's probably better to leave it. He's liable to jump out of the cupboard and just start having fun. I officially don't like Jared Leto in this role anymore. I wish he would go the fuck away. I remember reading all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about his method acting to get in the character. Fuck off. Go away. Give this role to somebody and also let somebody better write this fucking character because it, it was horrible in Suicide Squad. I, Garbage. I'll disagree and just say let someone write someone better write for him because I think yeah. I think that's a great quote. I think it keeps people talking about him. I think he, people keep talking about the Joker, which was basically written out of Suicide Squad. So I say, yeah. yes, give him a better writer, but keep him as yeah. a Joker. I thought he was a fine Joker just give him something. Tell him to quit giving the cast used condoms, dude. I think if that I, was I, all bullshit. I'm gonna tell you, if I was a fucking, I don't buy If I was an shit. actor in that fucking movie and that dude hand me a used condom, I'd punch him in the face. Except it didn't happen. Well, I don't know. They're saying multiple site reports that would happen. Yeah. So, anyway, Warner Brothers aired a new Justice League trailer and poster that pays homage to Alex Ross' iconic Justice League group photo. The poster looked good. The trailer. Yeah. Meh. Yeah, eh. Meh. Meh. I've had be- I'd had better vanilla ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> I felt the same about the uh, Justice League trailer, about the same as I felt about the, the Thor 2 trailer, oh. uh, Thor 3 trailer. I felt exactly the same. I, I've heard rumors that uh, the screenings of Justice League are saying that Aquaman almost steals the movie, that he's the best part of it. Oh, which- yeah, yeah, bro! That that terrifies <laughs> yeah. me. Surf's up, it. dude! Surf's up, bro! <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I I sat there and and what was funny is I'm watching the trailer and I was out of town this week. I was in a um I I was at the casino down on the Gulf Coast and I'm 
laying across the bed in the hotel room when the Justice League trailer comes out. And I'm sitting there listening, and Batman is voiced over by saying, when he died, he was a beacon of hope. He gave people an example to live by. And I shouted in the hotel room, Bruce, what fucking movie were you watching? (laughs) (laughs) What fucking movie were you watching, Bruce? Is that why you wanted to kill him for over two hours? Jesus Christ, man. I do think think we're going to get a Green Lantern. I think that's going to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't, I've read that. It wouldn't be a DC movie unless we shoehorn 10,000 things into a two-hour movie. So, yeah. you know, so I, I, I'll that's, still see it. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, oh totally. yeah, fucking A. I'm going to go see it. I'm totally going to go see it. But I'm after – I'll just put it this way. I, and and we, we had this conversation before this start. We weren't going to use this to beat the fuck out of Zack Snyder. And, I mean, look, we, we, we've been through that 10,000 times. Right. Once he is completely divorced from this project, Mm -hmm. from this program, I'll start looking things through a kind of a a more clear lens. This movie is still pretty much his. And I loathed fucking uh, uh, Dawn of Justice so much. Um, I have zero expectations for this movie. It's going to, I think it's going to be an interesting hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Especially in light of what, I've discovered today about what you're about to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, post news. Um, Jeff Johns confirms that he is working on the story for wonder woman too. They Hooray. still haven't, they still haven't made on Patty Jenkins official, but um, I, I, they're going to do what they need to do to make that work, man. I mean, they're, oh, yeah. they're fucking crazy if they don't resign. Jenkins her. can do whatever the F she wants. Pretty right much, now, man. Like, but there's still now more rumors coming up that mm. she really wants a crack at Superman, but this news coming Ooh. up, this news coming up doesn't make me believe that. Um, Aquaman footage was debuted. Two old men are fishing and their poles are snagged with the boat almost being dragged under the water. After they let the poles go, it goes to an aerial shot revealing hundreds of submarine warships and men riding on sharks. It uh, shows Aquaman speaking to someone off screen asking what they wish to do about the site. Um, in the, it, uh, it then goes to logo with Purple Haze as the background music. After the clip, Momoa reveals the warships belong to Ocean Master. Ocean Master is being played by Patrick Wilson. He brother, played, right? yeah, it's his brother and like his arch nemesis. Uh, Patrick Wilson also has a crack at DC. He played Night Owl and Watchmen. So yeah, he's a terrific actor. He's really good, yeah. really good. And, and he also and good played. Um, he also played in the uh, Conjuring franchise. Yep. He plays in that as well. So yep. he was he's also a, in a movie called Stretch that you should watch. It's fucking great. I'll go check that out. Yeah, uh, but the only thing that bothers me about that is Purple Haze, this whole like classic rock uh, yeah. thing for Aquaman. Come on. That's all right, though. When Thor uses Led Zeppelin, it's awesome. All right, so the slate of the next it movies is. have been released. No dates given. Um, no dates have been given for this release, but they're saying this is their slate. I'm with you, Scott. They're not putting dates to this shit. I think that this is another fucking example of Warner throwing shit to the wall and seeing what's going to stick. But I'm willing to bet half of these movies don't even get made. There's there's one thing interesting when you get to... They lined them up in order that they're supposed to come right. out, though. Correct. Which is, they lined them up in, in the order they're supposed to be released, me. but they didn't put any release dates. No, there are no but, dates when this is going to happen. Yeah. So ahead. anyway, they started with what's coming out. We have Justice League, Aquaman. We know that those things are done in post-production. Is Aquaman in post? I, I mean, uh, it, it's not done with principal photography, yeah. but you know they're starting the editing. Mm-hmm. Um, next is Shazam, Suicide Squad 2, what? The Batman, Justice League Dark, Batgirl, Green Lantern Corps, the Flash, which is titled Flashpoint, and Wonder Woman 2. Some movies are noticeably missing from that slate, and these were movies that were announced before. Gotham City Sirens, Black Adam, Cyborg, Nightwing, Man of Steel 2, and Justice League 2. Flashpoint raised the eyebrows, opening up the questions if the film will retcon the film's universe, and if Walking Dead's Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Lauren Cohen will play Batman and the Joker who were created after Bruce Wayne's murder, because Bruce Wayne is killed in Flashpoint. His mother goes nuts and becomes the Joker, and his father, Thomas Wayne, becomes Batman. Right. Right. Um, And they played those characters in the flashbacks in Dawn of Justice. So um, this is way fucking ambitious. I mean, Flashpoint? Really? You're going to jump into that? 
I, I mean, understand uh, if they would do it if if DC was really sinking. Like, look, and if Ben Affleck was like, I am out, which now I'm kind of like, I don't know. They would do it and say kind of reboot, but they're not. This is they're yeah. sort of course correcting as they go. But the thing that really gets me about this, and I'll let it go, is that Wonder Woman 2 is after this. I think this, if this movie is not like a re, if this is a reboot and they're still going to put Wonder Woman 2 after it, what the fuck? Dude, uh, Jeff Johns like then comes out and says, nobody need to worry. Flashpoint isn't going to significantly retcon our film universe at all. Then why are you going to make it? Right. Why are you going to go through all of that fucking bullshit to create all of these alternate realities just to destroy it? I mean, in comic books, I understand, but in fucking movies, come on, man. The operative word is significantly. Yeah. That's the operative word. And and I I think the reason they don't have all these other movies that you said like cyborg and whatnot. I think every this is Justice League too. Yeah, uh, it's 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 yeah. Captain America: Civil War, where it's not Avengers two point five. Right. It's you know it's that situation. Right. And, I mean, and and the the thing Which is, sucks is, because I want a proper Flash movie. Yeah. Me too. It does. Like he, it, it's like Flash cleanup. You know, I I I, I do think, and I, again, we're not beating up on him. I'm just saying that that the Batman versus Superman seemed almost like a homework assignment in terms of jamming so much into it. And I feel like to unpack all that on something that didn't do as well as they thought it would in the box office, that they're just going to go well so that we don't antagonize the fanboys that are on board. We'll just kind of do a little course correction. I mean, if Flashpoint's been their plan the entire time, mm-hmm. I can see why they can't keep a fucking director on this thing. That's yeah. what I was just about to say. I and mean, it's the, and it's the second to last fucking movie. Which is what the, f- which, which is you... why like Zemeckis would have made more sense, right? If he goes back in time and he's running against the clock to fix something to get. Just for the people who are listening that don't know what Flashpoint is, is that the Flash is like a apex fucking superhero in in DC's mythology. Yeah. He's godlike power and he can run so fast he can run back in time and he goes and changes the outcome of his mother being murdered and by a result yeah. of him doing that it changes the entire fabric of the dc he universe loses his fucking powers yeah well i mean that's on the tv show yeah, the TV yeah. Show. no oh yeah that's right in the comic too scott you're correct yeah, I mean, he loses his power. Not only does he lose his power, it's things that happen in the show as well. He also starts losing his memories right. because his memories are connected to things that happened. And by him changing those things as a result, he loses his memory. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a um, that it's very ambitious. Television show, awesome, because it's yeah. episodic television, and you have 23 episodes in a season to wrap around that shit. Right. This though, man, it, it is. It seems very ambitious, extremely ambitious. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean that that pretty much uh, wraps up Comic Con. Um, as far as the major happenings, there were only two other pieces of news that really fell out after that I checked out that I thought were very worthy of reporting. This one's huge. Wonder Woman is now the highest domestic grossing film of the summer of 2017. It has dethroned Guardians of the Galaxy two. Similar to what the movie did to its DC counterparts, it outgrossed Guardians 2 in less time, and o- and also on 200 fewer screens. Uh, I, that yeah. movie has a lot of legs left. Dude, legs. They say yeah. that motherfucker is still making like $10 million a week. Yeah. And that's in the grips of Spider-Man. Yeah. And Planet Apes. of the Apes. Dunkirk. You know, I mean, all the shit. What, what's the next big thing next week? Isn't there some other big release next week also? Uh, but I mean, but like Valerian came out. Well, Valerian yeah. bombed. So, I realize I mean, that, but it still came out. Right, but I mean, it, it, but that's exactly it. I mean, dude, you got these major releases, and it still got leagues. It's still a money maker, and 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 that's awesome, man. And also, Spider Man had its steepest second weekend drop, which was shocking because it's a really good movie, and no one yeah. thinks it sucks. But uh, Wonder Woman's hitting a demographic that doesn't get pandered to enough. That's well, why people keep going to see it. And, see it and, twice, so. and it's a it's a good movie. Yeah. It is. Oh, it's great. It's a it's a great movie. I mean, it, it really is. It's a it's a war movie. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's really cool. It it hits different things. It's a war movie, superhero movie that stars a female heroine, yep. and and it's it's great. It's really good. Yeah, so agreed. before you move on, I want to say real fast. Speaking of female heroines, which we didn't see, which was odd, Tomb Raider, the Tomb Raider movie. Yeah, yeah. They finished. I mean, they finished that. That's. 
you know, pretty much done, they probably could have showed a trailer for that. Yeah, I've only Ooh. seen um I've that only does se- not bode well. Yeah, that doesn't bode well at all. I've only seen still shots. I love the actress that yeah. plays uh, yeah. that plays Lara Croft, um Alicia Vikander. She's amazing. Um, I don't know how amazing this movie will be. Oh, I was no. never into Tomb Raider, so I, I don't yeah. have enough. Like it, that came out later for me. I gotcha. So I just thought I'd throw it in. Yeah, but no, good call, Scott. It really is. Yeah, troublesome that they wouldn't report something like that, especially at Comic Con. Especially at Comic Con, a convention that's now so much more than comic books. So, yeah. all right, and here's our last piece of news, and this one's huge. It's believed that Joss Whedon will now share director credit for Justice League with Zack Snyder. Um, it said that the reshoots have soared into the millions and the amount of footage could actually create two unique films. Oh. So that's the first pretty, thing. This is pretty much what I've been saying is going to happen. Here's the second thing also. Before we got to this, I didn't get a chance to add it to the news, but they're saying that there's a slight chance it actually might get delayed past November because these reshoots that they've been doing have actually interfered with Henry Cavill's schedule. <laughs> so they're having some problems. That's how extensive this shit is. Like he's doing Mission Impossible and he's got like full mustache and facial hair and they're having to shoot around that. Like Yeah. It's uh, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a fucking mess. So But if they're if they're actually talking about pushing the release date, that means they're excited about what they're seeing. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that could always be seen as, as a, as a, especially now could be seen as a thing of weakness, but I think the people like us, like the nerd community, the way that we look at shit and the way all this stuff's going to go down, we're going to sit there and say, look, the thing's been a clusterfuck. If they're going to take a couple of extra months to make the movie right. Yeah. Take the extra couple of they months. Just yeah. need, they just need to watch what's that movie. That's a November movie. Yeah, that was a November movie. It was. Yeah, it was. Now it's a January movie. Them and Thor were up against one another. So So now it's a January movie because it's not coming out for December. Yeah, but I mean. for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars. Right. Can't go against Star Wars. That's a disaster. But if it's a January movie, it actually kind of works to their benefit if it does get pushed because January has historically always known as been the death sentence for theatrical releases, right. but not so much these blockbuster movies, man. Look, you build yeah. them, they'll come. Their fan base is going to go see them right. no matter what time of the year you yeah. release them. So, yeah. All right, boys, anything to add? No. No, that's plenty. There you go. <laughs> Comic-Con 2017 wrapped up. We'll be back with our normal show next week with all of the uh, news and goodies and all that stuff. We ask you to jump over to YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel, Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar, PPV Guys. Give us a thumbs up, and uh, please comment if you're a true fan. You can also visit us at ppvguys.com. You can check out previous episodes. Also, jump over on iTunes. Subscribe at PPV Guys. Also, man, five stars if you're a true fan of the show please write us a review those reviews push us further up into the uh queue so to speak um also all our uh, shit you know instagram facebook ppv guys thumbs up like it if you don't like it give us the middle finger all that shit's good five star general says five stars across the board thanks for listening and see You are listening to Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar. Television. Movies. Pop culture. Keep up with the latest news from Luke Skywalker all the way to Batman. From Netflix to the CW. And all the news in between. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Or stream our episodes from ppvguys.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at ppvguys. Check out our friends Not Real Radio at notrealradio.com for our segment, Not Real Movie News. Should you listen to more? Yes. Will you agree? Maybe. Jury's out. Indeed. Thank Thank you. Thank you for listening and action.